recording will be recorded. Yep. So my name is Hannah and I'm a planner with the Active Transportation Division. Um, uh, these are the other people that are on, this, on my team. Dan Merrow, who couldn't join us today, he is a senior engineer um, working on this project. And then Stephanie. Um, Stephanie, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Stephanie Seskin. I'm the Active Transportation Director in the Boston Transportation Department. Um, and I am uh, dealing with some computer issues. So I'm going to stay off camera for tonight, um, but I'm excited to see so many of you here. OK, Great. Um, so today's meeting is a follow up to some of the feedback we've heard since our last meeting in November 2021. And we're gonna share initial ideas for some of the safety concerns that we've heard so far about, specifically about Murray Hill Road, Lindell Street and Basilic Street. And we're also here to answer any other additional questions you have about the project. So um, the project started in fall 2020, where we started, um, many of you at a pop-up workshop, um, we hosted a virtual meeting and the goal was just to collect and hear about your safety concerns. Then we followed up with initial observations and went back and shared some initial ideas for how we can use transportation street design tools to address some of the specific concerns you've raised. And then last November was when we shared the bulk of the content about um, our proposal um, with initial design plans for um, the uh, neighborhood slow streets plan as a whole. And we followed up with um, postcards, sharing the information about explaining what the specific design ideas we had. Um, so um, our process, it always follows this cycle of looking at your comments, following up with our own observations, and then drawing up an initial design plan. So the, as I mentioned, the bulk of the content um, was shared in the November 2021 meeting. That's when we shared streets eligible for speed humps. We shared an initial design proposal for an intersection, uh, for the intersection of Archdale Road and South Street. We also shared initial design plan for Florence Street between Marion Street and Flaherty Pool, and for the intersection of Firth Road and Florence Street. So if you would like to learn more or watch the meeting presentation, you can go to boston.gov slash slow dash streets slash lower south. So as a follow up, we mailed informational postcards. Um, we also offered one on one virtual meetings to chat with a member of our project team. And we heard lots of feedback. Um, not all that we're going to be able to cover today, but we did hear that we need to take a closer look at the section of the neighborhood that is near the Charles Sumner School. Um, so we're just going to share some initial ideas that. Um, address some of the safety concerns we've heard. So the streets we're focusing on today are Murray Hill Road, Fazili Street, Lindell Street, and Florence Street. So some of the street design tools that I'm gonna talk about specifically today include speed humps. So this is what a typical speed hump looks like in the city of Boston or what we would install in the city of Boston. So raised um, as bed of asphalt, raised about three inches above the ground. Um, it's marked by a arrow that you will, that uh, reflective arrow and, all, and always accompanied by a sign. So this is the standard signage that will accompany all speed humps. Uh, 
We also install um, something called clear corners, which you may see, um, may, you may have seen across the city. So anywhere in the city of Boston, you cannot park within 20 feet of a crosswalk or intersection. And this, um, leaving this distance clear makes it easier for drivers um, approaching the intersection to better see uh, other drivers turning onto the street or people crossing the street, especially if they're shorter, smaller, um, young children, people using mobility devices or wheelchairs. It just creates that space so that you, as a driver, you're better able to prepare um, for what's coming at the crosswalk. Okay. So, um, some of the safety concerns that we've heard uh, is that people speed. Um, and as I'm, I mentioned, uh, we in November 2021, we shared the street section, a map of the street section, sections in the neighborhood where uh, speed humps are eligible. So where we found that based on the curvature of the street and the slope of the street, we're able to install a speed hump. So we also heard that the two-way section between Lindell Street and Florence Street on Murray Hill Road just feels dangerous. So that short two-way section um, can feel unexpected um, for some drivers and also that the lane de delineation is not clear. So sometimes people drive in the middle road and you're turning the street or crossing the street feels kind of surprising or unexpected. We also heard that vehicles block sight lines at intersections. Um, some of the issues that I just talked about. School buses have a hard time making turns, especially during the ar arrival and dismissal hours of the day. Um, people speed on Florence Street, making it hard to turn from the side streets. And the period of arrival and dismissal time always feels busy and because of all of the issues that other pe people have mentioned that I mentioned above, crossing the street really just doesn't feel safe. So we followed up, we went, um, you might have seen some of our staff out there doing our standard arrival and dismissal observations that we always do um, near school. Um, so we found that people park really close to the intersections um, during this time. So all of the, the red lines that you see on the screen, that's where parking is restricted with signage or because of, there's a hydrant. And we found that um, car people driving in the area around this time are parking. Um, and it's just making it hard for the level of pedestrian traffic and school bus traffic to make turns or maneuver around this area. Um, and then the second really prominent concern that we heard is this section of Mer between Lindell Street and Florence Street, which is allows school bus traffic, um, just feel, doesn't feel safe at the time. Okay, so, um, some of the ideas that we have are first to install speed humps. So this, um, in future, we will share um, the specific locations for speed humps in, across the neighborhood, but we just wanna share it right here along with all of the other um, integrated kind of solutions that we are proposing. So speed humps on Murray Hill Road, Lindell Street, Bazilli Street and Florence Street will help slow the traffic, um, keep that cars driving at a speed of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. We space speed humps about 250 to 300 feet apart. So, so that standard spacing keeps, um, helps to keep speed at the speed limit or below. Um, the lines that you see on the screen that are in red, that is where there's currently no 
parking allowed. Um, and the white boxes, that is where we would install those clear corner boxes and flex posts. So that would prevent, push parking further back from the, from the intersection so that it improves sight lines. People can, drivers can better see what's coming um, at, on, from an imposing street. And so the line, dotted lines that you see on the screen right here that are in blue, that would be an additional parking restriction just to bring those existing parking restrictions kind of up to our standard com compliance, if you might. So it's um, boxes that are uh, 20 feet from the curb. Um, and then our third proposal is to make the section between, south section between Lindell Street and Florence Street uh, a no parking zone during specific hours. So this is something that we heard people wanted us to look into um, and we invite your feedback. Um, typically when we do time-based res parking restrictions, it's during school hours. So it would be during eight to 3 p.m. of the day um, as an example. We also propose adding a double yellow line um, to make traffic more predictable on this section of Murray Hill Road. So um, parking, the double yellow, we'll be able to install double yellow line at the beginning, at the intersection of Lindell and Murray Hill Road, and then Lindell and, I mean, Murray, Murray Hill Road and Florence Street. Okay, um, so just to give you a closer look, this is what the intersection with the clear corner boxes and the speed humps would look like at this side, Murray Hill Road and Lindell Street, which we heard was a problem area. Fazili Street and Lindell Street. and Murray Hill Road and Florence Street. So for those of you on the phone tonight, there are, we will be sharing all of the recording of the presentation and a PDF of the presentation on our website and on our email list. So we will share that in the chat box so that you can so please sign up for our email list to receive all of the material and content that we share during these meetings. Um, but that is all the content that I have to share with you tonight, specifically that is new for this project. Um, but we invite, <laughs> um, we invite your feedback and would love to answer any other questions um, that you have right now about the project. We know that it's been a while since the last meeting and we just wanna offer these opportunities for you to talk and have a discussion with us about the project right now. But the, as far as new content, that's all I have for tonight. So I'm gonna switch over to look at the chat to see there's any questions that Hi hey, Hannah. You um, could ahead. you could you go yes. back to the um, overview of sure. the whole zone? Yes. Oh, I mean of the changes in this area. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. Um, wasn't clear. All okay. right. Um, one more to show the parking restrictions. There we go. Um, okay, so um, the first question is where will people be able to park? Do you want to talk through that a little bit more, Hannah? Sure. So people will be able to park where 
they currently are able to park legally today. Um, it's just where you see the red and blue lines on this map. So this is in front of high fire hydrants that are there today and within 20 feet of the intersections of the streets. Um, and then we are suggesting that to clear up sort of the congestion and um, issues around that are happened during the busy, very busy times of like arrival and dismissal, um, making that the area between Lindell Street and Florence Street on Murray Hill Road, um, just one side of the street, the south side, um, a no parking zone. So that will better help to let buses make turns, people picking up or dropping off um, students at the school. Um, and okay, so this is something that we heard as a suggestion during our office hours. So we're putting looking to it and putting it out there as a proposal. Thanks. Um, what about speed humps on Baxley Road? Yes, so speed humps will are eligible for Bexley Road. So go back to that. There you go. Okay, so this map that you hear see on this right of the screen, uh, we shared this during the in November 2021 virtual meeting. Um, and on a lot of the postcards that we that many of you have shared that you received and arrive at your house. So what this map says is that all of the blue lines that you see, that is where we can install speed humps. And so uh, we take a look at that and we try to find locations, specific locations for speed hunts that are equal distance apart. And they mentioned about 200 to 250 feet of, or 200 to 250 to 300 feet apart. Um, and we always try to avoid putting them in front of driveways. We have to also avoid putting them on top of any street utilities that are on the ground. Um. Judith, I see that your hand is up and you also have the questions in the chat. So I'm gonna have you um, unmute yourself to ask aloud. Thank you. I am so grateful for this wonderful plan. Um, I, I was one of the people that responded and, and had some time with you and I felt very heard. So this is fabulous. Um, I am wondering if there's gonna be a lot of pushback from the folks at the school about removing parking on Murray Hill and in the area that you want to remove parking and make it a clear two-way street, that area between Basili and um, Florence. So I'm wondering if there was any thought given instead to um, making all of Murray Hill go one way towards Washington Street, um, and which would then allow for parking and it would not, you know, we wouldn't have the near collisions in the middle of the one traveling lane at the moment um, from coming from Wash from Florence Street onto, onto Murray Hill. Sorry, I don't know if that, that's clear. No, that, yeah, that makes sense. So I, there are a few issues um, with changing that street direction. So the first is um, school buses and their routing through the neighborhood. Um, because there is a traffic signal at Florence Street, it's much easier for buses to be able to exit onto Cummins Highway um, if they have um, an opera, like a gap in traffic that the traffic light creates. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, so if we made Murray Hill one way, we need to make Lindall the other way, for example. Right. Right. Um, and I think there are also just implications related to neighborhood access, people who live on these streets, how they get around and changes to that. Um, so our proposal was to kind of keep things as simple as possible. Um, there, it's the length of the um, parking restrictions during the school times 
um, isn't isn't quite that many spaces. Hannah, could you go back to show that? And I've been wondering what's going to happen to those folks. Where will they be able to park in place of that? And will the speed humps on Florence Street, which I am delighted, completely delighted that you're planning to put in, um, will those do away with a couple of parking spots? So speed humps, gonna... yeah, yeah, speed humps have no impact on parking at okay. all. Um, okay. So those are all still available for parking. Great. Um, on the south side of Murray Hill, we don't have the same um, thing that we have on the north side where people's homes are fronting the street. Um, so it's a little bit more palatable, generally um, speaking, very generally, um, uh, to not to leave parking in front of where people's homes are fronting the street, um, which is why we were thinking the southern side. Um, it's probably, you know, in total, we're looking at um, maybe six, eight parking spaces during school hours. Um, and again, we're very open to hearing suggestions for what those hours could be. Um, you know, we have kind of a potpourri of signage at school zones across the city. Um, and we do try to be as like context specific as possible. So if um, it feels like we could probably do it um, in the morning and then in the afternoon and be fine. We could look at that. We could also look at a more blanket um, day restriction that I think Hannah mentioned, you know, some places we do the restriction from seven to three on school days. Mm -hmm. um, we could also, I saw in the chat, someone suggested maybe not having parking there. Um, at all during the day, um, just to make that two-way traffic flow um, a little bit easier and less potentially contentious. Um, so, you know, we're we're really looking to the neighbors for their ideas on those restrictions. Great, thank you. And I, I do have one other question um, that is not related necessarily to the, I mean, it's, it's related to the fact that people can come out of Lindell, turn right onto Murray Hill, and then get out to Florence Street at which point many of them turn left instead of only going right and assume, I guess, that the one-way street signs don't actually apply to them. So I know that there needs to be a possibility for the fire trucks to come the wrong way down that part of Florence Street. But I'm just wondering, is there anything else that can be done to try and prevent people from going the wrong way down that one-way section of Florence Street? I, I just have had this awful sense that there's gonna be a car accident, a head-on, somebody going the wrong way in you know down downhill and somebody else speeding which hopefully they won't be doing with the speed bumps but but speeding up um you know it's just a recipe for disaster is there anything can, that can be done to prevent people from turning left going the wrong way onto florence street um Oh, Stephanie, I think you oh, are yeah. muted. No, it's okay. You can go, Hannah. Okay. Um, so this is something that we hear a lot in the city that um, there are specific sections or areas where people drive the wrong way. Um, we do our best to, if there's a solution, like making it clear that it's not, that this is a two-way street or, you, you know, you, that, or for example, Murray Hill Road is a two-way street. There's clear right turn um, at this at this intersection, but there isn't much that we can do in terms of forcing people to obey the existing traffic rules. And um, yeah, yeah. So we have run into this problem in a lot of neighborhoods where we have one-way streets, and people would prefer to not obey, um, but we are also challenged in that we do need to keep the streets open and clear for fire trucks to get through. Um, and that leaves us with very little actual space that we could, you know, narrow the street anymore um, as a result. Um, I do see another um, suggestion in the chat that maybe at the end of Florence Street at Cummins, you know, we could try to make that look more like a one-way street with um, markings for a left turn lane and a right turn lane, for example, um, so that it looks less inviting for people coming off of Commons. That doesn't solve the problem, 
um, at the intersection that we're talking about right now, but um, I, I do think uh, we could probably do a bit more um, with signage pavement markings type things to help. But as Hannah said, we're, we don't have um, a lot of other tools available. Thank you. There are actually a couple of other suggestions in the chat, a stop sign at Florence and Murray and a, and a I think it's a, what was that, a big left turn onto Florence. If people were gonna turn left the wrong way, they would have to, I don't know what, go around a big yeah. hump or bump or something. Um, uh, well, we probably couldn't do that is what I'm saying, but um, we can look at whether a stop sign is appropriate at this location. Again, I don't think the stop sign will prevent people from going the wrong way. That mm -hmm. solves a different problem, um, but we can definitely under like look into whether a stop sign would make sense um, on you. Florence Street. Thank you. Sure. We else talk now. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. No problem. Um, all right, Hannah. Um, we have a question here about changes on Bexley as well as the stretch of Florence between Bexley and Murray Hill. Um. Yeah, so um, as mentioned earlier, all that we have to share about Bexley at this point in the project is that we can install speed humps. Um, and we don't have the location to share with you right now um, but they will be similarly spaced to what you see on the screen right now for the streets that we're showing, talking about tonight. Um, and let me just go back just to make sure that yep. this right. Um, so yeah, if you can go to the speed humps map. There we go. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so the section between Bexley Road and Murray Hill Road on Florence Street specifically is a hill, um, as you guys know, and it doesn't meet the, it's too steep for us to put a speed hump. Um, and it's, as you can guess, it's pretty dangerous to put a speed hump on a very steep slope, um, especially during the winter time. So um, that section will not be eligible for a speed hump. Um, I'll take this next two comments, um, a crosswalk at the end of Bexley. Um, so we are unlikely to add another crosswalk over Florence Street, um, but uh, if the existing um, accessible curb ramps across Bexley um, are actually accessible. We could stripe um, a crosswalk. Um, if they aren't, we can put it into the program um, for them to be reconstructed so that they are accessible and can provide that crossing. Um, one of the reasons why we're unlikely to be able to add a new crosswalk is just related to um, accessibility design needs um, as well as every New crosswalk usually comes with some additional parking restrictions um, and we're trying to focus on the areas that um, you all have identified as the most important locations for um, the best crosswalks. Um, let's see. Uh, could a speed hump be placed on Florence right before it starts to slope upwards? Um, we could look at that. Um, again, we're not ready to really talk about a lot of these other streets um, at this time because we're still citing the best locations for speed humps. Um, but certainly with our, um, you know, our engineering team um, out in the field and with our survey, we'll be able to better understand what is, um, what's possible for Florence. Um, I also saw a question about adding a traffic signal at Florence and Cummins. Um, that is also really unlikely to happen. Um, if we added a traffic signal there, um, it would really hinder traffic on Cummins Highway. Um, uh, the, or, sorry, there is, um, yeah, we can't really add more. I think you met Lindahl at Cummins, but maybe not. Um, in any case, uh, we usually aren't adding new traffic signals with this program. Um, it takes a lot more analysis and 
construction work. Um, uh, and we aren't really touching those major streets in the same way that we're trying to focus in on the um, neighborhood streets. Yeah, and so I also saw a question about speed humps between Firth Road and Sycamore Street. So that section of the that that is a curve that is an example of where we cannot install speed humps because the curve it's the curvature would impact sight lines for that speed hump. So we want to make sure that people can see the speed hump from far away so that they can slow down. Um, and unfortunately that curve in the street between Sycamore to Firth is just too aggressive um, for us to install a speed hump. However, we do have a plan to show to slow speeds before between Sycamore and Marion Street. And that um, design plan is can be found on the website, and we talk. We have a discussion about that and why that we are using this specific street design tools in in the November twenty twenty one meeting. Um, we've had a couple of questions about timeline, Hannah. So if you want to um, jump to those slides and cover that content quickly, sure. Okay, so where we are right now in this design process um, is that we are still working on developing the engineering design plan. So we've shared initial concepts and ideas and explored different options. Um, and then we've gone back and kind of look, um, we're in the process of refining those ideas that we shared with you in November 2021. Um, and so, we don't, uh, nothing is final yet. Um, we're still looking for feedback and working on developing the plan. Um, and I'm sure that all of you are wondering when is this gonna be built? So right this construction season, we are focusing on um, prioritizing the zone, the, the projects and zones that have been waiting for a really long time. So unfortunately we were pushed back because of COVID um, and because of delays um, related to obtaining materials for construction. So, however, this, your zone, your neighborhood um, is gonna be prioritized in the next wave of construction activity that will start in 2023. So we'll have a better idea of when exactly in 2023 we'll be able to prioritize, um, you'll be scheduled for construction um, but it will be between spring and fall. So between around March and September, that's when the construction season is in. Actually, it's actually April to October. Okay, April to October. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, we are, are working hard to finalize as much as possible this year. Um, I see um, it is calendar 2023. Um, the city's fiscal year begins in um, July 1. Um, so our fiscal 23 means July through June, um, July 2022 through June 2023. Um, there's a question about how much money has gone into this planning, a lot of time and money for some pretty simple ideas. Um, I uh, love that you feel like these are simple ideas, um, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, we do like to spend a lot of time with community uh, talking about concepts, talking about design options um, and what they what the impacts are. So everyone understands what is happening when construction starts. No one feels left out. Um, people understand what to expect. Um, they may not particularly um, support every aspect of the design, but there was an opportunity to talk about it with us and with the neighborhood um, and their neighbors. Um, so that is why we're spending time doing this work. Um, and I know I personally have really enjoyed working with all of our communities and I love hearing your ideas and trying to incorporate them as much as possible. Um, 
So we are, uh, you know, moving, <laughs> moving slowly, but intentionally. Um, our neighborhood slow streets program is its own line item in the um, capital budget um, in the streets department in the transportation department line. That line includes all of the planning and engineering in addition to construction. Um, all these projects are being designed through contracts that are held by the Public Works Department. So I don't personally see all of the invoices, um, but if you need to see those, you can absolutely submit a public records request um, and they can be shared with you. Um, in general, our neighborhood slow street zones are about 200 to $250,000 for design. Um, and a uh, little over a million dollars for construction. Um, we are, this is one of 15 zones. Um, so that line that you'll see in the budget includes planning and design um, for several other neighborhoods in addition to the construction that is going on this season in about six zones. Um, so uh, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free again to email them to us. Um, or submit a public records request to the Public Works Department for um, the uh, invoices related to this project. Um, okay, moving on, let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, please, multiple speed humps on our small streets that are treated like the Indy 500. <laughs> Hannah, do you wanna review once again how we are planning our speed humps? Sure. Uh, so all speed humps in the city will, are designed the exact same um, details and specifics. So they're about three inches above the ground. Um, they're gently sloping and they're always accompanied by um, um, our mar a marking on the hump and then also a speed hump sign um, so that it can be seen by street plows, sweeping trucks and during um, snow, snow plow removal tracks. Uh, we aim to space humps about 200 to 250 feet apart um, to keep speeds at that level, uh, at the speed limit and prevent people from being able to speed up in between them. So that is the, that measurement is what we've found will keep people from being, being able to accelerate in between each of the speed humps. So, Hopefully that answered your questions about the speed humps. Um, all right, we have a raised hand, Karen. Thank you, everyone. First of all, thank you to everybody who's put in endless hours and thought into trying to make our streets safe. So that's something that I'm really thrilled to be part of. Uh, on the other side of it, I just want to sort of get a better sense of, you know, this is one sort of piece of the puzzle. There's so many pieces to this puzzle. I just, the, not like a week ago, I think I watched a school bus struggle to get around a corner and it was nothing to do with any parked cars. Then uh, the next day I watched a truck try to get around the corner. Again, not having anything to do with cars. I think we have to recognize that we're, our streets are, are in some cases very narrow, in other cases a little wider, but I, I think there's a lot to consider about um, where we're putting speed bumps or raised crosswalks or how, you know, we have to make it a, a user-friendly experience for not just the pedestrians, but also the drivers and everyone who's on the street. And so I think there's a lot to consider. And I'm, I'm myself, I'm worried about just this, putting lots of speed humps. I, I don't particularly like them. I do realize that, you know, there are ways to put in, maybe it's not speed humps, but a, a different format that makes it a little easier for the car to go over, a little smoother that, um, uh, that will slow people down, but not make it, you know, really tough on a car. And sure. then in terms of thinking in terms of um, clearing the streets from sand and snow, how that impacts as well. So I just wanted to, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. so a better understanding of how you're going about all this mm -hmm. and see if we can have more of a conversation. Right, so speed humps are um, not the type of thing that you would find in a parking lot. They are not a hard, solid bump um, that you can only go over at five miles an hour or less. Um, they are gentle slopes. Um, Hannah, could you show the speed hump again? Um, that generally rise and fall over a total of 12 feet. Um, so it is pretty gentle on people who are driving through unless you're going pretty fast. Um, at 25 or 20, which is our target speed, um, you're able to um, you know, continue easily at that pace. If you're going 30, 35, you're gonna feel it. Um, so you can see right here, this is a speed hump in the city of Boston. Um, you can see that the cars are parked on both sides of it. Um, so it has no impact on drainage or parking. Um, and they are spaced so that you can see the next one generally. So you're keeping your speed consistent between them. We don't just put down one and that's it. Um, so these are gentle in a series so that if you're going 20 to 25, it is very comfortable and easy for you to drive through. Um, we have okay. had speed humps in the city of Boston for a number of years now. Um, we work very closely with our um, EMS team as well as our public works team on street sweeping and snow plowing issues. Um, that's why every speed hump has that sign that you can see in this photo that says speed hump. That helps um, uh, when there's snow on the ground for our plow drivers to understand that there's a speed hump there and they can adjust their blade as needed. Um, it also just helps with additional visibility and warning for anyone who's driving down the street, um, but they were also designed carefully um, with EMS in mind, um, so that as ambulances are coming down, patients in the back aren't jostled around, which could be um, quite a problem um, okay. for, for them. Quick question, where do you, like in the, in the vicinity of like um, Roslindale Square and this whole area, Sure, I think your closest area is if you just head straight up Washington Street um, and turn down Williams Street or um, Brooklyn Road, um, just north of Forest Hills. Um, there are a number of speed humps um, in that small neighborhood there, um, which is called the Stony Brook neighborhood. Um, and uh, you can feel them in action. Okay. Um, you could also head, it's a little bit further, but also still technically Roslindale, you could go to East Roslindale to the Mount Hope Canterbury neighborhood um, and drive along Canterbury Street um, or Mount Hope Street between Hyde Park Ave and American Legion. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. um, and it's the exact same. Actually, I guess Mount Hope Street is technically a lot closer because you can just go over the Blakemore Street Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, so... So yeah, so those are some places nearby where you can see this design in action and feel it yourself. So one last question before I go, and I know there's a lot of other people who want have hands raised. Um, I know on our street, on South Street, uh, neighbors have been waiting for some kind of... Um, uh, so we are still so looking at a number, yeah. we're looking at the options and doing our homework. Um, so we have done additional speed studies, um, we've done more engineering field work and we'll be able to come back with answers to all of the questions um, for that location um, probably next month. So I'm not, so I wasn't looking at what's in front of my house on Archdale South. I was looking at, um, I don't know the number, Steve Gags on here, uh, Shoshana Freeman. I know they've been having trouble on that end of the street. So I was just wondering if there's any um, move to it. Yeah, we that. don't. Yeah, we don't have updates for the rest of the zone tonight. Um, but we are working on getting a lot of the details lined up so that um, the next meeting can have more information for residents on that side of the the community. So, we'll, how will we hear about it? You send out emails and postcards. Yep. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Um, yeah. Jose. <sighs> Oh, I think. Um, yes, I okay. just got uh, one quick question. Uh, I, I'm on a 31 Bexley uh, Road. We've been here for 29 years, and um, it's always been an issue with the uh, people speeding through here like crazy. 
So my question was, uh, who makes the decision as far as uh, which uh, streets have the, the greatest uh, need for uh, uh, speed humps? Because uh, I really think that we are one of the streets that need it the most because- uh, You're getting speed don't... humps, don't worry. All of the streets are getting speed humps in the area. Okay. Yeah, um, we choose priority locations based on um, information about how many youth live in the community, how many elders, if there are parks or schools nearby. Um, so, and we also look at past crash history as well as, um, you know, thinking about what are important routes through the, the community for people walking. Is there a bus stop or a train station nearby? We look at all of that information to prioritize. Um, so even though we don't have the specifics for Bexley tonight, we are working on it um, and we will have that update uh, for everyone, um, hopefully pretty soon. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and I just want to add again that um, we have lots of information on the website and you should be able to find a map of the, that we shared at the last meeting um, of where all the, sh all the streets where we can install speed humps in this, as part of this project. Um, there is another question in here about um, if there's enough room to put a speed hump on Florence between Sycamore and Sherwood. Um, so I know Hannah touched on that briefly, but we do have plans for that section of Florence Street um, based on neighborhood feedback. Um, so we are looking at introducing um, a raised crosswalk um, on both edge ends of that curve. Um, so at Firth and then at Sycamore. Um, there we go. Um, uh, improving the crosswalks along Florence and then based on feedback from our last meeting, we're reevaluating um, curb extensions at Marion Street um, and potentially adding another speed hump on Florence closer to Marion. Um, so that will help slow people coming in to the curve as well as as folks are leaving um, that curve by Healy. Um, okay, um, those are most of the questions in the chat. Okay, um, what's the difference between a raised crosswalk and a speed hump? Um, Hannah, did you have a picture of a raised crosswalk in this? Yes. Um, um, so a raised crosswalk. Um, let's see. If I, okay. I don't think I have something right here, but a raised crosswalk is basically a speed hump and a crosswalk in one. So the crosswalk will be at the same level as the sidewalk. So in, Whereas in most, at most crosswalks, you see a curb ramp that slopes down to the street. Um, a raised crosswalk just is basically keeps that even, uh, even crossing. So it's a flat platform um, from sidewalk to sidewalk and it's better and more accessible for people um, with mobility disabilities or who are pushing a stroller or a grocery cart or anything with wheels. Um, also, it's generally better um, during rainier times of the year when there might be puddles. So a race crosswalk is one way to design a safer crossing that um, eliminates those chances of puddling at the crossing. Okay, um, so I think that seems to be all of the questions that we have today and it sounds like the discussion is coming to an end. Um, um, we have one more okay. hand up, Hannah. Okay. 
Hi, like I put in the chat, I've learned a ton and I thank the team and I thank the neighbors for teaching me so much. So thank you. Um, I did look really hard for the objective crash data on the Vision Zero site and other sites. I consider myself a pretty good uh, researcher for facts and I just could not find the crash data. So I'm gonna ask for your help in when you present uh, the next time on um, the uh, South Street side and the Florence side, if you could please offer that objective crash data as well as the anecdotal reports from uh, uh, people who responded to the survey. Um, I would just find that really informative. And sure. I'm so Laurie, as I put in the chat, all of it, um, all of the crashes that EMS has reported to is available on our Vision Zero website. You can change the from date as far back as 2016. You can also change this so that you're only looking at 2016 through 2017. Um, you can change it to whatever year you would like. Okay, um, you Stephanie, can I don't want to interrupt you, but I did do that and I didn't find any crashes. So that's the reason I'm asking you to do it. It was a fascinating website. And I, you know, I, I mean, a lot of so here's Florence Street. Um, so we have several crashes um, that have happened on right. this section here, as well as around the curve. Um, so you can you can click on the dots and you can see when the crash happened um, and what modes were involved in the crash. Because EMS data is private, um, additional information about the crash is not available through this portal. Yeah, um, you have a cumulative view and I really appreciate that. So if we could see it again next time, that would be great. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Sure, um, and just again to reiterate what I put in the chat for folks who didn't see it, the crash information is used as one of many factors in determining which neighborhood slow street zones are prioritized um, each round, as well as just one of many factors that we use when we're looking at making changes on the streets. Um, so just because there aren't crashes on Firth or Murray Hill or Lindahl doesn't mean that we're not making any changes there. Um, we want to be preventative, not just reactive. Um, okay, so thank you everyone for joining. Um, let me find the presentation again. So if you want more information about um, have any other thoughts um, that you'd like to share with us? Uh, any other questions that you want to just talk with us one-on-one? -on -one? We have, uh, you can sign up for a virtual one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone from the project team. So that would be either me, Stephanie, or Dan. And that link is um, a bit.ly link that we're posting. In I'll the put chat it in right the now. chat. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, great. Um, or you can email us at slowstreets at boston.gov. All right, um, great. So thanks everyone. We'll stay on for a couple more minutes if you want to throw in a question, but um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you.